Hey everyone, welcome back. So we're gonna continue from where we left off from previous episode. And what's happening here was that we take a look at the image data of the stock bar chart data. And for each image, we assign a label that is the next five day return, right? So previous video, we talked about training this convolutional neural network model and we got about 60% accurate. So it's not the worst model, but it's not that good either. But hey, that's okay. We just want something quick and dirty. And we want to build some sort of a strategy out of this kind of performance, even though it's only 60%. So let's see what we're looking at right now, right? So first things first is we want to make a prediction. Because we have a model already trained, let's make some sort of prediction, right? So we say model.predict. We throw x in there. This is the in sample X, right? So we're not talking about test set. We're just talking about in sample, what the performance might look like. And then we check out the shape. Here it's by two, meaning that it's one zero, right? And the reason for that is because the neural network is designed in a way that the output has two units. That's why here you see it's by two. Now that's kind of ugly, right? We want to turn into binary and we want to turn into zeros and ones. And so that's how we do it. We can use this argmax function uh, to give us zeros and ones. And then we quickly check the performance and we can see, hey, look, you know, in sample, we're hitting about 65% on average. And that is in terms of training because the training accuracy here is about 65%. But in reality, what I will do is I will take a look at the VAL accuracy. Uh, I will probably even separate the training and testing set as a two different sets, so that I train the model on one set and then I test the performance on the other. But for here, let's just build something quick and dirty, even though 65%, that's okay, let's just work off that. First thing to do is I want to get some sort of probability, right? Because here we're working with ones and zeros, probably a little bit difficult to rank things on ones and zeros. You're going to get a lot of rankings that are essentially the same ranks. I don't like that, right? So what I do is, I use this function here. This is called the list comprehension. The bracket here in Python, that's a list. And then here I have a y hat bracket i, bracket zero. The bracket zero is to grab that first unit. This i loop through every single i in the data set. And in doing so, I'll be able to grab one of the numbers as the probability of if the stock is going up or down. So that's essentially what's happening here. And you can assign that in the label data frame as Y prop, right? Indicating that this is the column for probability. Plot it out, you can see the top few rows of the data frame here. It's happening on the last column. That's how I added this value here. And now the idea is simple, right? Now the idea is, hey, look, you know, let's massage this data frame a little bit using some sort of data wrangling methods in a way that I want to simulate some sort of artificial portfolio such that every single time period, I ask the AI the prediction of the next five days, stocks with the highest probability that's going to go up, it's going to be positive. Let's hold those stocks. Otherwise, you don't do that. Right? That's kind of like the story here, to take advantage of what the AI tells you. AI says goes up, let's buy those stocks. So what's happening here is I check the number of unique values, turn out there are 12, meaning that this data frame, we only have 12 dates, which is fine. Let's start off with that. And then here I check the date column with the each level of the date. Once I filter those rows out of the label data frame, I sort the values by probability, and then I check the top few rows, right? It turned out if you do an ascending, it turned out that the return for the next five days is mostly positive. And if you do descending, the return is mostly negative. So there's definitely some signal here based on whatever it is that the AI is learning, right? This point, let's just pretend that it's a black box, right? We're not getting into the theory of convolution neural network. Let's say that majority of audience don't really know what's in there. But clearly from this visualization, you can look at the column of return five days and the column here. By sorting the ascending and descending, you can clearly see that the return has a very different expectation, right? And that expectation is precisely a signal that we are trying to exploit here. So how do we do that? Well, let's use some sort of for loop. 
right? So we're going to create a market return as an empty list. We're going to create a portfolio return as an empty list. Let's run through this for loop. Let's create these expectations one by one according to every single date. So that's right. Each one of these eyes here in the for loop is a particular date, right? Particular timestamp data structure. And you compute the current day according to that timestamp, and then you append it in a big list. That list is gonna be what we're working off with, right? You check the average divided with standard deviation, that's the measure for volatility, and boom, you have your sharp ratio. And it turned out that the market sharp is 0 0.064, whereas the portfolio sharp is 0 0.657. So this is actually quite a big difference, right? It's like by a factor of 10. So I want to dig a little bit deeper into really what's going on here, right? Reason number one is we're cheating a little bit because this is in sample. And we actually observe that these are returns that are always positive, right? So you don't really get that negative volatility there. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, numerically, what is really happening? Numerically, what's really happening is if you look at the performance of the portfolio, the expectation here is 0 0.037. Now, if you have a portfolio that's performing that on a daily basis, that is actually a very large return, right? Let's do the simple math here. If you do a rolling rate of return on that percentage over every year, there are 250 trading days. So we're taking the power of 250 and then subtract one. That is essentially the performance that you're going to get in a year. Now, that's insane, right? I don't think anyone, including Warren Buffett, is able to pull up this kind of performance. So that is a little bit unrealistic, I would say, just simply because here we're using in-sample data. We saw the data. The model saw the data. We know the data is going up. And those are the stocks that we're holding, right? That's really what's happening here. Versus if you look at the actual um, market return, so I can swap this variable here with the market return, the expectation subtract that 34 percent right if a stock market performs 34 percent a year that's possible right 2019 maybe we had a good year 34 percent i'll believe that that's just the market performance obviously we're not expecting that every year we're just using 12 data points right 12 timestamps to set as a proxy of how the situation might be working so there you go that is the analysis here we have some sort of workflow. Now, the next step from here is to A, improve your model. And then not only do we want to improve the model performance on training data, but we also want to improve the model performance on test set data. And then one last thing I want to say about next step is if you look at the data frame a little bit, right? There's this column called the market cap, and then there's maybe return of 20 days, 60 days, so on and so forth. Here, we even have a volatility. So now it really opens up the doors, right? When I hold these five stocks and when I set the return, I'm computing dot mean. Dot mean means I'm taking the average, meaning every day I look at the stock universe and I'm picking the top five stocks according to what the AI suggests. And I put my money, I allocate my wealth equally weighted amongst those five stocks. You don't have to do that. Right. In reality, you can come up with whatever weighting strategy that you want. You can come up with a market weighting strategy simply using market cap. You can look at volatility, so on and so forth. You get the idea, right? It doesn't have to be equal weighted. You can even compute the mean variance portfolio, right? Or also use cap M if you want to, to come up with the optimal portfolio weights to allocate your money. And you can just rebalance your portfolio on a daily basis or on a weekly basis according to this code here. I think the important thing here is the code is essentially set up the workflow that we can take this workflow and then take it into backtest. So we scale it up, right? This data set is only 2019. That's only 2019 here. And we're testing like what, 12 timestamps. So you wanna scale up, you wanna check the data from probably 80s all the way to 2000s. And then you wanna lever up all sorts of different weighting strategy. And then you compute all those sharp ratios from training set as well as the test set. And then you see what's going on. And even though this is not an investment advisory class, it's just a YouTube video, right? It's obvious it doesn't subject to investment advice. But me personally, I will only add on that 
if the test set shock ratio is beating that of the market. So with that being said, hope you liked the video and I'll see you in the next episode.